welcome to this first edition of the top MBA bookshelf, where we will discuss a key takeaway of a recent business book that hopefully will make you think of your own business in a new way. Today, I will talk about Sunil Gupta's book, Driving Digital Strategy. You may know that our MBA at DTU places a lot of emphasis on strategy and innovation. And Sunil, a Harvard Business School professor, came to present his book to our alumni last year. This book deals with strategy. And a good place to start when discussing strategy is asking the question, how do you compete as a business? The well-known paradigm from Michael Porter's days was that you either had to be better, meaning to be differentiated in some way, or to be cheaper, meaning achieving the position of cost leader in the market. Either way, you had to have strong focus. And this framework is still very much alive in the minds of many business executives to this day. But is it still valid in a digital era where transaction costs turn towards zero, where information flows almost instantly and freely around the globe? Can you think of any kind of examples of companies that are both cheaper or even free and differentiated better in some ways. One that comes to my mind is LinkedIn that I use to build my professional network for free by uh, selecting who I connect with, reading their profile and building that network in a very efficient way. So here is one framework that uh, Sunil comes up with to help us think through that strategic question of how we compete one that has two axes. On the first axis, it is whether you sell your product to each customer separately or whether there are network effects, meaning that your product and services gain value, provide even more value as the number of customer increases. And the other axis is whether you sell a single product on a standalone basis or whether you offer suites of products and services that complement each other. In this framework, Amazon and WeChat, amongst other companies, achieve the position of the fourth quadrant, the magic quadrant, because they provide marketplaces that enjoy those network effects. In other words, when you have more customers on the platform, you attract more vendors, and conversely, the abundance of vendors attract more customers to the platform. Also, they offer many complementary products and services that uh, uh, all sit under one roof in one place, creating a one-stop shop that's very successful and yet not focused at all. So when is it still valid to be focused, either being the cheapest in the market or to be better in some way? Sunil says that it is when you sell one product to one customer at a time. In other words, when you're on the first quadrant. So here is my question to you. Where do you sit with your business? In which quadrant are you? And then maybe you can think about who you are competing against and in which quadrant your competitors are. Also, this is a dynamic game. So in which quadrant are they moving? And then conversely, can you move to a quadrant by leveraging network effects, by selling complementary suites of products and services, or maybe both? The answer may not be obvious or easy. But that's why Sunil comes up with a question to help us think through that. And it is, who would miss you if your business or even maybe even your whole industry disappeared? Which needs would not be met? Sunil takes the example of Best Buy, a retailer of electronics in the US that struggled against Amazon because Best Buy has their own physical stores. But people would go and see and touch the products and then order on Amazon. So what should they do? Should they match Amazon's pricing, essentially trying to become the cost leader? That's not very viable for a company uh, that has brick and mortar stores. Should they improve their customer service and make it better for their clients? Well, that's not viable either because people use the customer service and still order on Amazon. So instead, they ask that hard question, who would miss us if our business went under, disappeared? 
And they realized that the big brands of this world, the Panasonic, the Samsung, the Sony's, will miss the showcase, the display where people can see their products. So they went to them and asked them to pay for the showcase that they get in the Best Buy stores. And that's how Best Buy uh, renewed its business model and turned around its fortunes. Thank you for watching this uh, first edition of the Top MBA Bookshelf. I welcome your comments and hope to see you next time for a book called Embracing Complexity.